Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's second video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next week to 10 days. For today's second video, let's get take us around the 21st of September. So, um, going into the second half of the month with the week 10 day video updates. Uh, now, we'll be able to extend out beyond that actually with the extended GFS and ECM ensembles. They run to around a couple of weeks, so that will take us uh, more or less to the final week of uh, September. So uh, we'll start off with what's happening in the tropical Atlantic. Have a look at CSV to the end um, for the next month. That takes into the beginning of October. The five-day forecast has been released. Um, so it's not a particularly exciting uh, five days, I have to say. On a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the most interesting five-day forecast we've ever done and one being the least interesting. I would rate it somewhere at around sort of minus 20. Uh, it's going to be a very uninteresting five days coming up. But if you want, have a look at the 5D forecast and see what's going on. September is that sort of month where when it um, all becomes very sluggish and uh, very slow moving, it can actually be a very, very irritating and dreary type month, really, if you're looking to do forecasts for. Um, and we're in that kind of rut at the moment, really, with the weather patterns not doing a great deal. And uh, it's not hot enough to be summer, it's not cold enough to be autumn, it's just sort of kind of like day after day of nothing weather, if you like. But there we go, that's September. Right, so let's see where there is some uh, action going on, and that's down in the tropical Atlantic. So we have three disturbance areas. We have one here in uh, the Caribbean, that yellow X just there. We have another one just there, and we have one over here towards the African coast. Let's deal with them all one by one. You'll notice there are no tropical storms or hurricanes now, by the way. So um, we lost Dorian a few days ago. We've actually got the remains of Dorian close to us uh, now, bringing some uh, patchy rain across the country. Um, and uh, also, of course, we've lost uh, tropical storm Gabrielle. We'll have the remains of Gabrielle in the northwest of Scotland tomorrow. Uh, right, so let's deal with these disturbance areas. Then. So the first one is disturbance free, uh, with a 0% chance of cyclone formation in the next 48 hours. So a tropical wave located between the west coast of Africa and the Cabo Verde Islands is forecast to move quickly westward during the next several days. Slow, some slow development is possible over the weekend and into early next week when the system is moving over the tropical Atlantic. Then there's Disturbance 2 uh, just there with a 10% chance of cyclone formation in the next uh, 48 hours. So a broad area of low pressure is associated with a tropical wave located about 650 miles east of Lesser Antilles. This disturbance is accompanied by large but disorganised area of cloudiness and thunderstorms. This system is forecast to move uh, westward toward unfavourable upper level winds for tropical cyclone formation. 10% chance in the next two days and 10% chance in the next five days. And then finally we've got this one over here towards the Caribbean. This looks a little bit more interesting. This is Disturbance 1. In the next two days, it only, ha only has a 20% chance of cyclone formation, but a 60% chance, a higher chance, in the next five days. So, with this, they're saying uh, widespread cloudiness and showers extended, extending from the southeast of Bahamas northward over the southwestern Atlantic for a few hundred miles are associated with a surface trough of low pressure. Limited development of this system is anticipated today or tomorrow. However, conditions are for forecast to become a little more favourable for development over weekend and a tropical depression could form as the disturbance moves slowly toward the north moves slowly toward the west northwest across the Florida Straits or South Florida and over the eastern Gulf of Mexico. Regardless of development, this disturbance could produce periods of locally heavy rainfall and gust winds across the Bahamas through Thursday and across Florida during the weekend. So that could be our next named tropical storm, that one just there. Might be. It's a 6% chance that this will become a tropical cyclone in the next five days. So that is probably out of a three going to be one to watch. But that doesn't mean that the other two can't um, suddenly start to uh, develop. These two just here, they might. Um, but at the moment, it's a low chance that that is going to happen. 
Coming back to home, this is how the central England temperature is looking from Hadley uh, for September, provisional up to uh, temp. So we're now 10 days into month, of course, with BCT. We're standing at 13.9. That's an anomaly of uh, 0 0.6 degrees below average provisional to the 10th of September. So uh, that's actually a little bit below average for this part of September. But remember, September on average, I'm not sure it will be the case this year, but on average, September is a cooling month. It's a cooling down month from start to finish as you're going into autumn and the sun is moving into the southern hemisphere. So 13.9 uh, at the end of the month would actually be ever so slightly above average, but at the moment it's a little bit below average. Um, so if we were to keep that deviation, 0.6 degrees below average to the end of the month, we would probably be coming out somewhere like the low 13s, possibly the high 12s. Of course, we won't keep that deviation because it is going to start turning uh, warmer for the weekend and into next week. These are the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation uh, ensembles. The next couple of weeks, we're at London today. The red line here is a 30-year upper air temperature average for London. You can see we're above average at the moment. We do get a little bit of a drop in the temperature coming up at the end of the week and into the beginning of the weekend, but then temperatures are rising up again. So that Sunday through to Monday, probably going to be the warmest uh, period here. Um, I reckon in London, we could get down 25 degrees at 77 Fahrenheit on Sunday afternoon, and possibly again on Monday afternoon. Beyond that, generally staying above average through towards the end of the month. That's this period just here, by which time we're beginning to return close to average. But it looks like a pretty warm sort of period coming up. Precipitation-wise, very dry over the next uh, 10 days or more. Virtually no precipitation down in London. There will be a little bit more in the northern western part of the country, but down in the southeast, very little Possibly just a few hints of something a bit more unsettled there again in the last week of September. So I think we're probably channeling the final week of September for something of interest to start happening. Um, before that, it's going to be uh, really quite tedious, I think, for many of us with um, very little in the way of actual weather going on. Temperature anomalies from the 11th to the 19th of September are going to be a little bit below average for Scotland and a little bit above average for England and Wales. Overall, no great deviation either way. Precipitation anomalies remain very dry from the 11th to 19th of September. Uh, really, really dry rainfall anomalies there. That's how uh, things are looking then with GFS for September. High pressure is in over top of the country at the, uh, for Saturday, I should say, 14th of September. Uh, high pressure is in over the top of the country at 1,035 millibars. Will be high and dry as we go into the weekend. And high pressure continues to dominate weather into the early part of next week. You have a go at pulling in some cooler air from the knob. I'm not sure how much of that we're going to tap into, really. Most of that is plunging down into Scandinavia, but we are kind of on the periphery of it, so particularly for northeastern parts of the country, it may start to feel rather cooler through the early part of next week, probably still feeling quite warm in the southwest. And through, of course, next week, very little change, really, this high pressure fest goes on. So uh, we're up to day 10 now, Saturday 21st of September, and you've guessed it, high pressure still is ruling the roost at 1,025 millibars. We did say in the autumn forecast, but certainly September and probably October 2, favouring a lot of high pressure this year. There's a question mark about November, uh, which we thought possibly could do something a bit different. That might mean either going a lot colder, or it might mean going very wet and unsettled and low pressure dominate. But we think November probably is going to be the, the one that does something a bit different over three months. But for September and October, we was always sort of channeling the idea of a lot of high pressure and uh, so it is uh, It is um, proving for this September anyway. You can't say what October's going to do yet, of course. Now, as we go into extended range with this GFS run, eventually it looks like it's starting to turn things more on So it's beginning to move into the final week of the month where low pressure is beginning to try anyway at have a go at breaking in from off the Atlantic. But really, we're still, even at this point, uh, under high pressure sitting across southern and eastern parts. So we get to the very end of the GFS run, which is getting us to Friday, the 27th of September today. And it does look as both things are gradually turning more and so. So with time, as we go into the final week of September, we may start to see uh, a breakdown to this ridge of high pressure. But before then, high pressure really is going to be ruling uh, the roost, particularly over weekend 
and through most of next week. Uh, this is how the GM is looking. So again, the high pressure is dominating the weather on Saturday. Um, there's no changes really through to start of next week. Some cooler airs coming into the far north of the country, but otherwise, run of this ridge mainly dry and warm conditions. And that high pressure continues through into the second half of next week. Very little change. Um, that's how we look at day 10. So again, it's trying to turn a bit more unsettled to the northwest of the country with this low pressure just here. But for England and Wales, we're still more or less under a ridge of high pressure. So certainly the next 10 days at least look set to be dominated by high pressure conditions. ECMWF again, same idea, high pressure is in control of weather on Saturday. That ridge continues into Sunday, going nowhere fast, really sitting very close to the country throughout next week. Uh, we dominated by high pressure by turning it through to day 10, which is Saturday the 21st of September. Again, a little bit more unsettled out to the northwest with these areas of low pressure, but basically we're still seeing high pressure dominating most parts of the country up to the 10th day, which is Saturday 21st. Of September. These are the options that are on the table within the ECM ensembles today at day 10, which of course is Saturday the 21st of September. This is from the Icelandic Met Office. We have 20 members of the ECM ensembles, including the control and the operational run with a ridge of high pressure over top of the country. So that's going to be mainly dry and settled. Another 20 with high pressure, again, more or less over top of the country, possibly just a little bit uh, centred to the north slightly, but basically high pressure in control of those. And 11 have a ridge just out to our west, a trough through Scandinavia. That's the coolest option. Still mainly dry, actually, but it's the coolest option because it will be bringing in wind from the north. Overall, up to day 10, high pressure is well and truly in control. These are the options that we've got in two weeks' time. It's taking us towards the end of the month. This is the 26th of September. So we have 23 members of the ECM ensembles with high pressure extending in from the Atlantic into the UK. They're mainly dry. Uh, 15 just here with high pressure out to the northwest. Again, mainly dry. The Atlantic's blocked off, but we might be bringing in some slightly cooler air from the northeast. And then, of course, these 13 just here are very unsettled. So there is a there is an um, option within the ECM ensembles. It's a minority. But there is an option by the end of the month to be into proper autumn conditions with a deep trough of low pressure there over the UK and most parts of northern Europe. The jet stream is going down here. But of course, that's two weeks away. There's only 13 out of kind of 50 members of the ECM ensembles going in that direction. So... The majority of uh, ensemble members with the ECM suite, anyway, are keeping things largely settled even to two weeks away. But there is a minority option that we could see autumnal conditions uh, setting in by the end of September. I think it is out last week in September where if it is going to start turning more unsettled, it'll happen. I don't think it's going to happen uh, before then. So we've got at least uh, uh, 10 days of high pressure dominated weather to go. Uh, and then finally, CFS V2. Uh, so these are 500 millibar heights, broken down into week periods. The first week period takes from the 11th to the 17th of September. Coming week with low pressure pushed up to the north with a jet stream as well. That's up there. So um, this high pressure is just sitting over to the south of the country. That's going to be mainly dry and potentially uh, very warm too. Then we go through to week two, which is the 18th to 24th of September. That one also dominated by high pressure, so no changes with that. Uh, then we go through to week three, still lots of high pressure, although it is beginning to slip a little bit towards the south southwest. It's the 25th September to the 1st of October. Low pressure is up to the north. We might be starting to, we might be starting to weaken that ridge a little bit, although overall still very anticyclonic conditions. And then week four, which gets us into the start of October, this is the 2nd to the 8th of October, we see the ridge uh, appearing over Scandinavia then. Uh, with low pressure out to the southwest, and the wind is pulling in from an east or southeasterly uh, direction. If this low pressure was to start to undercut the region, it might actually start turning a bit more uh, unsettled down in the south. But uh, even then, really up to uh, week four, the first week of October, generally it looks like high pressure is quite dominant, I have to say. So there's no quick way out of this high pressure, and it may all start getting rather... 
Uh, most of the time, getting rather tedious, really, with these videos over the next few days. I'm going to be sitting here saying the same thing over and over and over again, seemingly, because there's no sign of uh, anything changing in the foreseeable future. So, so for the next 10 days, high pressure is dominating. There may be a bit of a hint of something going a bit more unsettled through the last week of September. But at the moment, it's only hints. And uh, even then, I think we probably favour continuation of high pressure. As we get through to October, whether, whether we do get a breakdown then in October and start going into autumn, or uh, whether this high pressure just uh, hangs on even into October. We'll have to wait and see. That is, of course, uh, a very long way out. Uh, right, so that's it for your videos for today. Tomorrow, I have another week's 10 day video update, so come back for that then. Will there be any signs of an end to this reach? We'll find out uh, tomorrow. Um, but that's all for now, and thanks for watching.